Hey everyone, welcome to today's Bible study video. A couple of days ago, I stumbled across, well, let me not say I stumbled across, I came across this article, okay? And it piqued my interest because the person who was, I don't want to say promoting it, the person who mentioned this article was basically insulting the article in general, okay? So I, stumbled, I went across to the article read the article and I took away my my thoughts my thinking my perception I'll get into that in a moment and what I did next is because this is something I do okay one of the things that I do here is I will discuss and cover various topics that might necessarily come up so what you can see obviously you can see me now I've got my screen recording as well. So we're gonna be going back and forth between you seeing me and obviously you seeing what's on my screen because I wanna break this down. Now, the thing that took me aback was what happened next. So I read this article. Now I don't know who this person is, never heard of her before or anything like that. And I believe if you find something, you think something's in error, it's not about necessarily just coming out of it out outwardly and just um, doing a video like this, like I'm doing now per se. And even when you get when you watch this video, you're going to see um, this might not necessarily be what you're used to. Okay, so I kind of said to myself, you know what? Before I do anything, I want to go and contact this person. I want to find the person before I make um, a video. Okay, outwardly. So I start going on the internet, searching around. Um, doesn't really seem like there's anything up to date uh, except for a Facebook, okay? So there's a couple of Facebooks. I think one of their Facebooks was a bit old. The other one was pretty much currently. I think they had posted literally this article a couple of days ago. So I said, you know what? Um, maybe I, let me try and find a way to message them privately. So before I did that, I started looking at the comments in the particular post where they were like okay this is the article i just wrote and I, I i saw them responding to comments i said okay you know what since she's she's responding to comments it makes sense if i just put my thing here but before i did that i wanted to just read through the comments just in case someone else had done what i wanted to do so i don't need to necessarily waste time basically so i begin to read through the comments and the reason i'm not going to show it to you on the screen is because I wrote my post um, and subsequently, um, I'm not the biggest Facebook user, so I don't know necessarily what happened, but I, I assume that, the, well, let me just say the, the potential is that they may have blocked me from viewing that particular post because I can see other posts I wanted to put in this video. Um, I can see other posts, but I can't see that specific post. So maybe they deleted the post as as a as it's in totality maybe they just blocked me from seeing the post i don't know okay so i don't want to assume what happened so as i'm reading through all of these different comments i'm starting it's starting i'm starting alarm bells are going off in my mind okay in my head okay and there's a, a huge problem i'm seeing time and time again now the first thing i want to highlight is and this is what i see so much today on youtube especially I see a lot of people throwing names, insults, all of that kind of stuff. Oh, you're a heretic. Oh, um, X, Y, Z. Okay, all of this kind of stuff. Now, whether they're a heretic, whether they're an unbeliever, whether they're an enemy of the faith, all of that kind of stuff, that doesn't matter first and foremost, okay, in my opinion. And, excuse me, that isn't something I think that you should be just casting stones at straight away there was limited if any scripture okay in all of the comments from these people most of the people had just gone beyond that and it's just oh you're a heretic oh what are you doing oh this is the silliest thing i've ever read all this kind of stuff okay and i'm sitting back looking at this and i'm saying to myself this doesn't make any sense if all of these people here commenting and i believe or even some of them why have they just gone to this point where they're just being so aggressive it makes no sense to me okay um, and that was one of the reasons why I wrote my long post and that was one of the reasons why I'm recording this video. It's not to bash, it's not to bruise any person, anything like that, okay? Um, 
but I want you to get some context because I wrote a long post and obviously, like I said, I've, I haven't got access to that post anymore. So what I'm going to do is I actually wrote it all down. So I've got it here. I'm going to be reading it off my phone, what I actually wrote. But I want you to actually read the article as I'm going to break it down as we go through it. And literally you can see what I wrote in response. Okay. Now, if you're ever going to correct someone, if you're ever going to try and do anything like this, how smart do you think it is to start insulting someone all that kind of stuff if you really and truly want their best interest okay now i mentioned it in my statement maybe they are a deceiver maybe um they just got it wrong okay maybe they just left these things out of their story because they wanted to fit a particular narrative i don't know i don't know the person and the likelihood is a lot of these people commenting don't know her either okay so because of that you have to think about how you respond and i just think that's just part of life anyway you should be smart in how you respond to people so let's get into um behind the scenes now you can look at my screen as i'm recording it and you can basically see what the article is and you can kind of see um i'll break it down as i go okay um just so you can see exactly what i said so as you can see on, the, on my screen now this is an article on i guess it's a popular website um and the story is entitled the first story in the bible was the first case of me too now for those of you who don't know what this whole me too thing is obviously in recent days weeks and months there's been a lot of um women coming out talking about how they've been victims of sexual assault okay now i'm not um i'm not an advocate i'm not someone who's promoting people to sexually assault people sexual assault is wrong okay you should you should never be trying to sexually assault anyone okay and this isn't me here to talk about the me too campaign or anything like that okay um again like i just said that's a very sensitive issue um women have gone through um some really hardships and it that's not right under, under any circumstances okay now let's go into what this particular rabbi okay wrote so she says as you can see i'm sitting at home watching the news this past week in awe and with gratitude more than 150 young women including several world-class athletes have come forward to talk about the unspeakable abuse they endured at the hands of a predator doctor one by one they've broken through silence often at a nearly undurable unendurable cost this achievement this total this tidal wave of bravery is a contribution to the collective soul of women and anyone who, is ever, who was ever afraid to tell their story. As a 40 year old woman rabbi, I've become emboldened by these brave young women. She's become emboldened by these brave young women to speak a truth that she's known in her heart for a long time, but she's been hesitant to share. Okay? The time has come for her to step forward too. It's time they all we all acknowledge an overwhelmingly powerful source of shame and silence in the bible okay the story that begins the bible the first one that we, we learn in sunday school the founding story of man and woman upheld for thousands of years by judeo-christian religion is actually the story of the first sexual assault of a woman the woman's name is eve and the perpetrator god okay so we stop there. Then there's a couple of things, and uh, as I go through this, I run through some of the comments that people are saying. So first and foremost, okay, she says she's a 47 year old woman rabbi. Now I'm going to say this. Um, according to my knowledge, I'm not the most scholarly in regards to um, Jewish current Jewish traditions. Okay, not biblical traditions because a lot of the stuff that Jewish people do today isn't lining up doesn't line up with biblical judaism as you might know it okay now to my knowledge i didn't, I didn't know there was women rabbis and in the comment section both on this article and in the facebook post you had a lot of people insulting her for the fact that she's a woman rabbi okay now me personally i didn't say anything about that okay that has literally nothing in my opinion to do with anything okay for what i'm here for anyway secondly what else does she say okay she 
basically says the woman she'd been seeing recently has encouraged her and emboldened her to come a step forward and talk about something that she's seen in the bible and what she's talking about she describes as the first sexual assault of a woman and she says ultimately as you can see here that eve okay as we know eve was sexually assaulted by god okay now let me start to read what I wrote in response. So first, this, this is what I said. I said her name, okay? I said, X can say what she likes. We all have free will, no pun intended. And this is the truth, okay? You can say what you like. I can say what I like. God has created us with free will to say whatever we like, okay? So it's that simple. Whether you like what someone says or whether I like what someone says, that isn't the important thing. And look what I said next. If this is her, her view of Eve, that is for her to decide. Okay. We're not here in, in, in the earth. God didn't create us to impose and force our views on other people. Okay. Now look what I said next. I said, did God sexually assault Eve according to X? Yes. Okay. According to this woman who's writing this. Yes, he did. Okay. What I said next, even if you think this is preposterous she is entitled to her own view and that is the truth okay everyone is entitled to their own view and look what i said next um her basis of god's sexual assault for this is the bible so let's examine her view because look what she says next uh, here i want you to think about this here is a young beautiful intelligent naked woman living in a state of grace okay so i stopped there and this is what i said the Bible does not describe her, Eve, as young, intelligent, or in fact, hungry. Okay? If you go by the biblical text, it doesn't say anything of those sorts. Look what she said. Look what I said. She may have been young. We don't know based on what the Bible says. She may have been intelligent. Okay? And she may have, in fact, been hungry. But the Bible does not say any of these things from my knowledge. So this is all X's opinion. Okay? She writes, she was in a state of grace as quoted above, okay? Who gave her this grace? And the reason I was asking this question is because she's saying Eve was in a state of grace. Or well, who gave her this grace? God gave her this grace. So once you ascertain that God gave her this grace, so you're basically saying that God gave her grace, okay? Gave her this grace to enjoy this life, but then turn around and sexually assaulted her, okay? That doesn't make any sense. Well, let's keep going. She continues, okay? Look what she, re she's, she says next, right here. She's hungry, so she does the most natural thing in the world and eats a piece of fruit. For following her instincts, trusting herself and nourishing her body, she is punished. Her punishment, she will never again feel safe in her nakedness. She will never again love her body. She will never again know her body as a place of sacred sovereignty. Okay? So look what I wrote. She's hungry, quoting her. So she does the most natural thing in the world and eats a piece of fruit. For following her instincts, trusting herself and nourishing her body, she's punished. Now I wrote, compare what X says above with, Gen with what Genesis 3 says in the Bible. Then I pasted Genesis 3, verse 1 to 6, and I'll read it. Okay. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, the serpent said to the woman, okay, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree, trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which in the midst of the garden God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree good for food, and that it pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat okay now this is my comment on that there is not there is not one mention by x in her article about the serpent then i bracketed satan as mentioned in revelation 12 okay now i said this maybe she thinks he's made up so maybe she doesn't believe in the devil maybe she's admitted that she admitted the devil okay to fit her narrative of mere hunger 
or maybe she just missed that part in the study so maybe she just didn't read it she didn't see the serpent maybe where she learned about adam and eve the serpent wasn't part of that story okay that's just three probably three of the most basic common things that might have happened there's obviously other situations but this is what i wrote okay and i said whatever the reason Eve herself makes it clear in Genesis 3, she knew she had free reign over all the trees in the garden to eat except this specific tree. That was part of what I read, okay, in regards to her conversation with the serpent. She continues, okay, let's continue what she says. So she says, what have you done? He, God funders. Eve wants to defend herself, but she is too ashamed to speak. Eve our first mother, whose name means the mother of, li of all living things, is silenced, much the way the patients of Dr. Nassar were. Okay? So I say, she continues, and then I quote what she wrote. Okay? What have you done? He, God funders, Eve wants to defend herself, but she's too ashamed to speak. Eve, our first mother, whose name means the mother of all living things, is silenced, much the way the patients of Dr. Nassar were. Now look. This is what I said. She first misses out that God first speaks to Adam. Okay, she doesn't mention that about their sin. Adam blames God. Okay, this is what Adam says. The woman whom you gavest, whom thou gavest with me. That's what Adam says in Genesis 3.12. Okay, and as this happens, okay, as Adam says this to God, he then moves on to Eve. Secondly, okay, and God asks her, God asks her after this, what have you done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. So Eve, as we commonly know, says it was the serpent who deceived me, okay, and tricked me. Genesis 3.13, that's what it says. We don't know how God responded in tone. The scripture doesn't say how God responded, okay, um, in what manner he responded. Funda is her opinion, okay, doesn't say that in the scripture. She responded, okay, we just read, I just read what Eve said to God. It was a serpent that beguiled her and she did eat. So she was not too ashamed to speak. That's number one. And was not silenced as X states, according to what the Bible actually says. Now let's go back to what she says again. Because she continues. The founding myth of Judeo-Christian religion, the story of Eve granted generations of men permission to violate women. It teaches us that the women are liars and sinners. Even if she is telling the truth, she deserved it. Okay, God told her not to eat the apple or wear that skirt or go out after dark or be pretty or desirous or in that bar or on that street or in that car or born a girl. Okay, so I wrote, she continues, and I quote what she wrote The founding myth of Judeo Christian religion, the story of Eve granted generations of men permission to violate women. It teaches us that women are liars and sinners, even if she is telling, if she, even, even if she is telling the truth. She deserved it. God told her not to eat the apple or wear that skirt or go out after dark or be pretty or desirous or in that bar or in that street or in that car or born a girl. Okay, then I quote here. Um, so I re respond. Genesis 3 does not give any such permission of violation. Okay, it just doesn't. Okay, it doesn't promote um, sexual violation any kind. Okay, based on what the scripture actually says. Okay, you can read the text above of Genesis 3 for yourself, and that's my recommendation, my recommendation for you to do so. Go and read Genesis 3 for yourself, even though I've, I've read most of the important text in regards to what we're talking about here. Then I say this next Eve did not lie in Genesis 3, she didn't lie. Okay, um, to our knowledge, so it doesn't teach she is a liar, she was deceived. The text does teach both Eve and Adam, okay, are sinners. More so Adam, okay, because he knowingly, without deception, disobeyed God, okay? He wasn't deceived, he wasn't tricked. He just knowingly said, you know what? I'm gonna eat this forbidden fruit. The New Testament even focuses on this in Romans chapter five and 1 Corinthians 15, okay? The Bible is specific in this chapter to say fruit. So we can't say it was an apple as some like to presume. Some people like to say it's a forbidden apple. We don't know what fruit it was. Okay, we can make assumptions and presumptions, but to categorically say it was an apple is just wrong. Okay. 
And look what I said next. If you read further in the text, the Bible says that God clothed them. Okay, as you read on, it will say the Lord made them coats of skins. Now look at this. With 2020 view, we can see this as God's indicating in this text. Okay, so as new um, modern day today Christians, we can look back and we know about the doctrine of grace and all this kind of stuff. Okay, this is a text showing us that man cannot cover their own sins. But need God to cover their sins because why? They sinned, and what did they do? They realized they were naked, and they, they sewed fig leaves and covered themselves. Okay, and it says God clothed them later because God was showing them you can't cover your own sin by yourself. That's works. Okay, this is consistent from here into the New Testament. They made clothes of their own to cover their nakedness, which is a sign of works, as I just mentioned. God clothed them to cover their nakedness. Brackets. Covering nakedness is not a sexual assault. It's actually quite the opposite. Okay, so if you see someone naked and you cover them, okay, you're actually protecting them. Okay, you're not sexually assaulting them. Okay, so it's even going beyond um, the assertion. Okay, the scripture goes out of its way to even highlight that. Look, God could have just left them naked and feeling ashamed. God said, "No, I'm going to clothe them." Okay, that doesn't sound like someone who's sexually assaulting someone. Okay. Especially if he was the person that actually gave them that grace and liberty in the first place, as the writer said. Now, Eve is not saying me too, according to the Bible, but according to X. And this is fine again, as I stated. Okay, I said it already and I'll say it again. You can have whatever view you want of scripture, of life, whatever. That's fine because you have the free will to do so. Okay. But misquoting and misrepresenting what the Bible says to create a narrative is wrong. Okay, it's kind of like me saying, okay, so I, I come out and say, you know, what? evolution is real. Okay, we all came here from a big bang, but then claiming Genesis one and two show this. Okay, then going to Genesis one and two and saying, look, you see all of this stuff. This is the big bang, even though it clearly doesn't. Okay, now she goes on to say. So some other stuff is us talking about South Africa um, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and I'm, I don't want to get into the comments that are below or the comments that were on the Facebook post because it was really negative. I didn't feel like anyone there. Some people said, "Oh, that the Bible doesn't say that," or "It's not script. That's not scriptural." But no one that I remember actually quoted scriptures. Okay, enough scriptures to combat this view. Okay, now again, I'll say this again. You can have whatever view you want, okay? I can have whatever view I want. That doesn't mean there's not a penalty for that, okay? But God has created us in, the, in a way with free will that we can think what we want. We can say what we want. It's just that simple. And I wanted to do this video for a number of reasons. It wasn't really to bash someone. That's why I didn't necessarily say the person's name. I didn't try and make fun or um, say, say all these different names. Because really and truly, if you're you're doing things out of love, okay, you, you don't necessarily need to be calling names and all that kind of stuff. It's just about what does the scripture say? You're trying to help someone. Think about this. Even if this person here, okay, this this woman is a deceiver, okay, shouldn't I want her to to, to come to the knowledge of Christ, okay? And what do you think is going to help that person, okay, get closer to Christ? hurling stones and insults at them okay whether they're true or not or presenting scripture to correct the error okay you shine light into the dark place and you allow the light to illuminate the person it's just that simple so i'm doing this video not to throw stones at someone whether they're right or wrong okay everyone's entitled to their opinion but you need to understand if you're really truly for god okay throwing stones at people and all that kind of stuff instead of correcting them with scripture okay don't just go about saying oh you're a heretic oh xyz because i see it all the time okay if you really want that person to be saved and to be corrected if they're not saved or just to be corrected if they're in a little bit of error then be mature about it okay don't act like a child don't start just throwing cuss words and names out there bring scripture okay and quote the scripture in line with what the person what they're saying is wrong okay so if someone says evolution is talked about in genesis 1 and 2 quote genesis 1 and 2 
based on the person's points and say, look, you're saying this evolution, this is clearly saying this, okay? Because the scripture is what will convict people, not you insulting people and all that kind of stuff. That's only going to make it worse and that's only going to make it worse for you because you're going to have to go and check yourself and check your heart and say, you know what, am I really looking out for this person's best interest ultimately, okay? Think about God, okay? It says in Peter, okay, but, um, God is not slack concerning his promise, promises. And he, he also says he wishes that all, okay, come to the knowledge and and repentance, okay, knowledge of Christ. Um, if if God really means that, do you think that every time people are going into areas, how does God ever save people, okay, that are lost? Think about the Apostle Paul. He calls himself the chief sinner, okay. He persecuted the church of God. But Jesus still spoke to him. Still gave him the opportunity. Okay. And that's what I want to see more of. That's what I'm trying to present more and more of to the people I get to impact. Okay. So when you see someone in error, don't just go off on a tangent and start insulting them and saying, oh, you're a heretic. Um, oh, you're an unbeliever. Just because you don't necessarily believe what you believe in everything. But you bring the scriptures and highlight and present it to them, okay? Maybe you do it privately first and foremost, okay? Then you go in a group, okay? Try and link up another way. And if you're going to do a video, if you're going to go out publicly, okay? There's different ways to do it, okay? You bring out the scripture and say, look, I came across this, like this particular example. I just, I, I, this article fell into my lap, so to speak. And I said, you know what? I don't like the way everyone's just attacking the person, okay, without just highlighting scriptures and all that kind of stuff. So I said, you know what, I want to make a video about this and this is my view and this is the scripture. Didn't insult the person, didn't say they're a heretic and all this kind of stuff. They may be, they may not be. I don't know because I don't know the person. And how many of you really know the people you're calling heretics, okay, and devil worshippers and all this kind of stuff, really when you think about it? Okay, but at the end of the day, people can fall into error. People can make mistakes. It's that simple. In the New Testament, Paul says himself he had to ultimately rebuke Peter. Okay, and say, look, you know what? You're not walking right. Okay, and Peter accepted it. It's just that simple. But if Paul turned around and said, "Oh, you're a heretic, Peter. You're a devil worshiper because you're doing works salvation." Okay. You're living faith with the Gentiles, or when the Jews come, you're going back to work salvation. You're a gen, um, you're an unbeliever. You're a heretic. All this kind of stuff. Then there would, there'd be division. Okay, but what did he do? He said, "No, look." He withstood him and said, "Peter, you're in error." Okay, and they had a communication, and then they were able to move on. Okay, I'm not here to now just be throwing stones at people and saying all this kind of stuff. Even if you rebuke someone, it doesn't mean, oh, because I've got license to rebu rebuke someone, I'm going to rebuke them in a way, oh, I'm holier than you, all of this kind of stuff. No, okay? You rebuke someone, you correct someone in love, okay? And when you do that in love, it's completely different when you do it just because you feel like, oh, I can do it, so I'm going to do it. It's just that simple. So on that note, I hope this video is edifying you um, and shows you how to deal with these kind of situations. Always present the scripture. And as always, leave your comments below and thanks and take care.